Hi, Wheatlings. Welcome back. Um, I'm still recovering from my surgery, but I will be at work tomorrow. Ophelia, what are you doing? You can't see her, but she is now playing <laughs> with my cell phone. I don't know what is so interesting to her. Maybe you've seen her right there. <laughs> I'm still recovering from my surgery, but I will definitely be at work tomorrow and I'm really excited. But tonight I decided, since I read so many graphic novels and every weekend I buy two to four different graphic novels, that I really need to start investing time into doing some reviews of them. So I'm going to start with Little Bird, and this is by Darcy Van Polhiest, and the artwork is done by Ian Burcham. And why am I starting with this particular graphic novel? Well, number one, I finished it today. Number two, I'm going to admit that I didn't understand all of it, and that's completely okay. I'm fine admitting that I didn't understand all of it. But number three, I can tell if I take some time and reread it and kind of put some things together that I would be able to understand it. I read some reviews on Goodreads, and people really complained a lot about some of the violence and the, it's a resistant story. It's a revenge story. There's going to be a lot of blood. Okay, Ophelia, what are you doing, little girl? You have never done this before. Kitty, 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 kitty. You know I can't pick you up. You weigh more than 10 pounds. I can't pick you up. It's against the doctor's orders. Come on, kitty, kitty. Oh, kitty. <laughs> if you could just see her face right now, it's so cute. Anyway, there is a ton of blood and gore in here. It's handled very well. It's not realistic it's realistic that if you were fighting a resistance that there would be blood and gore so that is in here but there is so much more to this than that but it, it's almost to the point the panels that do have all of that remind me of something like Kill Bill where it's over the top for this artistic expression beyond the fact that it's also necessary in the story so I want to try showing you some of the inside of the book so let's take a look as the story begins we see that we are in the middle of a resistance of Native people against religious, political, authoritative tyranny. And in the opening scene, Tantu, that's the mother on the left, leaves Little Bird to, to be by herself. There's two panels a little bit more, actually three panels. The one on the left where we have the destroyed village and the colors are very muted by Bertram there, Bertram there. And then when we go to the right, we have the religious we'll say the religious right, but we have the religious authority over on the right that justifies through God the destruction of community, the destruction of culture, the destruction of people, place. Again, let's kind of look at the layout on the left. And this is looks like very typical Bertram from what I've seen in this book. But at the top, you have the political religious leader that is basically taking over all of the space of the story on the page. And then very small. So Bertram has a lot of these just slivers of panels that show a lot. And we see Little Bird with her tears and she's remembering her mother. But most of the time when we see Little Bird, she's more fierce, determined. And she has a mask on a lot that tends to hide her emotions. And so when you get this sliver of a panel with the tears, that's the emotion that she's feeling that's just not allowed to be seen by the reader. In the next layout that I want to show you, again, the layout is very basic as far as comic layouts go. The coloring of the blue is very magic and mystical. And this is where there is a correlation made about dreams, the part that we play in them, how dreams and history are connected to everybody. And in youth, you have that connection even more, but then the stories of your culture live inside of you. And at the bottom, again, we see Little Bird with the clock from her mother, constantly reminding us of the time of the narrative. Obviously, if you've read Little Bird, you know I have to talk about this mystical layout. And on the right, we see kind of a splash page. There are, in fact, two panels, but they're blended together by this mystical chair, um, mystical stair <laughs> case. In the scenes previous to this, Little Bird was shot. And so now she's in between worlds, getting to talk to her mother and getting guidance from her mother. And you don't know, is Little Bird dead? Is this part of a dream? And there are stories of wolves in here, but right now the reader is the wolf. And this is from Italo Calvino, who says that in fairy tales, readers are wolves. And it is our job that we need to find out where Von Pol 
pull these pulls the strings how is he lying to us and where is the tell where we can uncover what is truly happening here Jumping much later in the resistance narrative, we see the sequence where Little Bird is captured and the imagery posed by the imagery posed by Bertram is so beautiful, stunning, and alarming all at the same time as you have the cross with all of the bodies of those that have been killed staked to the cross. And then again, we're reminded that this all might be part of a dream. This might be a vision of the future. Again, we are not sure. But what we do know is that Little Bird has been captured. It is during this time that we discover that Little Bird actually has a brother that she never knew about. And he also wears the, ma wears the mask and he is part of the religious government. However, he doesn't share the same beliefs and he wishes to be more like his sister, which seems to be strong and able to resist. A lot of the book is this fight for culture, this fight for land. And towards the end, as you can see the red veins running underneath the surface and they slowly start to fade away, it seems that there is this connection between people and the land, that the land is living. And you see it illustrated more fully in earlier parts where the same red veins run through the people, even those that are destroying everyone. And again, now we've come full circle and Little Bird is again utilizing the same words that she used at the very beginning to tell her story. And now she's reflecting and telling it again. And the colors are so beautiful, but this is before the real true end of the story, before the final revenge, shall we say, before the culmination. But from the painting, it looks a lot more hopeful. I hope you enjoyed some of the panels that I selected. I'm not really sure about how to review or critique a graphic novel because People may have read it, they may have not read it. I don't want to be called spoil alert, but I want to show enough that you might be interested. And as you can see, I don't understand all of it, but I'm going to go back and piece it together. Now, the last thing, and I'm sure that you noticed, <laughs> is that I have no idea how to actually film the pages. And I've seen videos where people have the pages kind of scrolling and it's just like beautiful and very stable. And I was unable to do that. And I know that you can get maybe a stabilizer, but I don't know if there's another method. So if you know of a way to film the pages with an iPhone 10 that will make it look a lot better than what I did, please put the comments down below so that I can learn. I did Google, I will admit this, I Googled how to video a page and then like nothing came up that was useful or even related to that. So I'm not sure, but you know me, I'll get, I'll get better. I'm going to try to do at least two videos. Um, I'm going to try to do at least two video reviews a month. We'll see if I can hold to that. Anyway, I know you're wondering what's this. Well, thanks for asking why this is the most delicious vegan soy eggnog, eggnog on the planet. <laughs> and it's perfect first day of December eggnog. Oh,